it is 501 uh, September 17th, and I will call the Waitley School Committee meeting to order. This meeting is recorded. The first agenda item is reorganization. I will take nominations for chair. I nominate Bob Pallet for chair. And I will second that one. Bob, are you willing to take it again? Sure. Thank you. Good. Good. All those in favor of opposed nominations and all those in favor. There you go. Bob, you are chair. All right. And these are just nominations. Uh, these are last year's. So you can see we you have to go through every single one. Okay. Um, do we do nominations for vice chair? Yeah, we do. So you just take it over nominations okay. for vice chair. I'll make a nomination to have, have Beth be our vice chair again. Second. You want to do that? Okay. All in favor? And then secretary, the same thing? No. Uh, your point, secretary. Okay. Henry, would you be our secretary again if we need a secretary? I would love to. Okay. And frontier rep, I'll do it again unless. Like to. I'm on the way. Okay. Who, who's frontier rep? It's so, you know, Union representatives, all three of us. Collaborative, would you like to I'll do, do that again? If okay. You guys are okay with that. Yeah. I actually come to enjoy learning about their stuff. Thanks. Capital planning, would you like to say? Yeah, I'll do that okay. again. Policy, I'll stay with the policy unless somebody else wants to do policy. Sick bank, the two of you would get for sick bank. We did a lot of work on that one. Sure, so we didn't much, have to do anything. So to do. I had to do one for, I think one or two for Frontier last year. Uh, negotiations, Beth? Sure. And superintendent's agreement, me, which is, Gone, yeah, gone anyway. So, okay. Are That's, there negotiations this year? Yeah, it is. So, be careful if you want that. Yeah, that, I'll nice. do it. I'm going to be on if. No, I'm not going to be on it. So, far as here. I'm for Union 38. You want to be on for 38? Nope. Okay. You run it last time for 38. Yeah. Right. You, if, if you can't, if you can't make done. it, Beth, just ask me to fill in. Yeah, and, exactly. I also volunteer as a sub. Okay. And the only, um, the only issue is if like we're in the thick of it. And someone new comes there, just knowing, like, just know the, you know, the, like, why are we doing that? Yeah. It's, it's that kind of stuff. Yeah, so yeah. just being, um, yeah, I can kind of yeah, just a fill in if, if you need to. Sure. Cause I'll be on the, I'll be on the frontier one. So we, we have the same problem with attendance because there's eight members of it. And then, like, so you get five at one meeting. And then the next meeting, three people, you know, two people show up, like, why are we, what are you doing on the table? And you're, you're that, why, you know, you're going to get some 15 minutes of playing, you're not capping last thing. Um, but, so it's just as good, but yeah, I, I get it. So something, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, uh, review in a minute from April 25th. Um, I will make a motion to accept the moment. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Um, principal's report, please. Mm -hmm. You skipped financial statement. Oh. Oh, yeah. Um, financial. Shelly, sorry, Shelly. <laughs> Shelly, you're next. Sorry. Thank you. I'm fighting a cold, so I didn't want to be coughing in front of everyone. So I am remote today. Um, I'll try to keep this brief. Uh, we have not had a meeting since uh, April, right? Is that what you just proved was April minutes? I don't think we had a May or a June meeting. So you have not approved warrants. Um, on the record since April. So 62 warrants were signed electronically um, between late May and uh, September 23rd is the next warrant that we're set up for. You currently should be reviewing that if you haven't signed it already. And the total on those 62 warrants was $430,516.35. As always, if you have questions, feel free to reach out at any time. Um, I do. I did send you the one and a half ish month report. Maybe it was about two months uh, for school choice and budget. So I want to go over those. But really quick, a couple of things before I get into account overages is one, 
we're still working to set up the composting um, that'll actually end up being paid this year out of the food service surplus that we have in the revolving fund for school lunch. So that won't hit budget like we thought it would. There's plenty of money. School lunch is covering it for the other schools from their own revolving funds that do have composting already. It'll be similar service to what Frontier and Sunderland Elementary set up where uh, there'll be a dumpster staff will get trained on how to properly compost and what is compostable so that they can work with staff and students on that. And then I think the pickup is every other week. Um, so Patrick McCarthy, our food service director is working to get that established right now. Um, and then the other thing is I don't have a revolving fund update for you as far as where our balances landed from last year, because I'm still working to close out the books with the town accountant. Um, revolving funds, she was a little bit behind on. I think she's caught up. So we're just going to finish our reconciliations and hopefully next month I will have an update for you on revolving fund balances. Uh, account overages, a couple of things to be aware of. Um, the school choice account does show a negative transaction under, I believe it's called accounting professional fees for $4,000. That's our end of year report audit, which only takes place every three years. So we don't build that into the budget because it would be over inflating the budget on the years we're not using it. So when the bill does come in, we pay it from school choice unless we receive it and have end of year funds that we can pay for it. Uh, this year we had to pay for it from choice. The other thing that you'll notice there is um, there is an overage in the IA account, and this is because we have a school choice student who is receiving IEP uh, services and requires a one-to-one -one IA. In this instance, the um, fund should be fully recouped through special education increment claims, so it's um, an expense out, but we'll get revenue to offset it, so there's really no expense to the district there. And then there was a small custodial invoice from fiscal year 24 that did not get encumbered. The only place to pay a bill that doesn't get encumbered by the end of the year is from a revolving fund. So that got paid from school choice. Any questions on those before I go on to budget? Great. I circled, I circled a few things and I may just wait until next month and see how it goes for next month. You know, I was just looking at the principal is over by 7%. Yeah, I'm going to is talk that about that right now, actually. Okay. Um, so Sorry. looking at the budget, there's a couple of expense accounts that are over because the agreements for services came in after the budget was developed. For example, I believe on page one, the function code should be group 1410. It says accounting software. That's our annual renewal of our um, infinite vision software. We never have the renewal during budget season, and we also don't have control of what their increase is going to be. So we'll have to make an adjustment next year for that. All five districts are seeing an overage in that line because the fees went up. I will say that we are looking at our software to see what platforms, because there's different components of the software that we use and some that we don't use. So we're trying to drop some services that we don't need to get some credit because it is a really expensive cost district wide. Um, District-wide technology under code 1450, which I think is also at the bottom of page one. I'm looking into that with Scott Paul, our IT director, because th I think that there's just some things misclassified there. So hopefully that will be right-sided in the new year. The principal line is a little bit tricky because we had ESSER money to help offset the budget. And we planned to pay part of Chrissy's salary out of ESSER. Uh, what we discovered in the process is that like a teacher salary paid from a federal grant, we get with a hit with a 9% surcharge for MTRS, which is Mass Teacher Retirement. Because Chrissy is part of Mass Teacher Retirement, we were hit with that 9% surcharge as well. So in order to bring down that 9% fee, I paid something else and put Chrissy's salary back on budget, which is why it's over the amount there. So it's really just manipulation of funds so that we didn't lose a full 9% on the um, ESSER grant. Does that make sense, Bob? Yes, okay. absolutely. I knew I had a rhyme or reason. Yeah, it, it, 
normally the principal line would never be over budget unless the contract was negotiated after budget was approved, which actually did happen. So that's inflating the line a little bit, but it's primarily related to ESSER. Um, the teacher line and the IA line that is over, those are actual overages. We had some column movement that wasn't accounted for. So a teacher advanced their degree um, that was missed during the budget process. So maybe they moved from master's to master's plus 15. So that is an actual overage. And the IAs, IAs are always tricky because if we hire IAs with more experience and that have bachelor's degree, they get more um, a higher salary on the salary schedule. So those are actual overages that we're going to have to keep an eye on throughout the year to make sure that we have funds to make up for those accounts. At this point, I'm not worried about it. Things typically work out where we have unused PD funds or um, savings in other account lines so we can recoup that money. The only other account that I'm keeping an eye on that's currently not over budget is our heating fuel for the year. Based on our cost uh, per gallon that we're locked into, we have about a $5,000 buffer if we use all of the um, gallons that we're locked into, which is 15,000 gallons for the year. That could fluctuate if we have a tough winter and we need to be you know, keeping the building hotter than that could grow. But the good news is that our lock-in rate is less than it was last year. So fuel prices seem to be heading in the right direction. That is all that I had for today. Um, if I miss something that you have a question about, I'm happy to take it now. Otherwise, we'll wait till next month and see how things look in another couple of weeks. You guys have anything about it? Yeah, we're wondering about the math specialist. Is that, is that person building? that hires? Oh, yeah. So the math interventionist was hired, um, but she doesn't start for, does she start this week, Chrissy? Next Monday. Next week. Um, so in this first report, which is only through August 31st, because we hadn't hired her yet, she hasn't been paid yet. So there'll actually be some saving there because she'll have a prorated salary because she's not starting until late September. So you'll see that next month be almost fully spent. Okay. I don't have anything else. Do we, need, do we need her rest of the night so she can rest and have some chicken soup or something so she'll feel better? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll stay on. It's okay. No worries. I'll just shut my mic off. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Shelly. Uh, I guess it's your turn now. All right. Um, so we've had an incredibly smooth opening to the 24 25 school year. Like, you're really smooth. Um, we have a lot of sort of new moving parts this year, and uh, I'm very pleased with new people that we've brought on board and things just going to go on along. Um, students hit the ground running, and in just 14 days of school, the teams are set and everyone is settled, and everyone needs to have the place we're able to jump right back in. And so that's a very smooth thing to visit on day two, that we welcome kids in the morning. I gave him 15 minutes to settle in before I started poking in, and it was like, it's not a day of school. I think everyone just got right back into it. Um, it's really great to see. On August 26th, we held the West Annual New Year's Eve Ice Cream Social. Within a string of beautiful sunny days, it ended up being the one day that there was a two hour time period with inclement weather. Mm -hmm. We were going to push through and have it outside until I received a potential hailstorm warning on my phone. The weather didn't hinder our good time. It was well attended and so wonderful to see our students and families back on campus. Um, and the PTO was great. At, it gave me some feedback on um, how it feels to be a new parent and how they sometimes couldn't figure out who went with what grade, um, whereas everyone who's already been here, they didn't know everybody. So uh, we made some tweaks and it seemed to really help out. Um, summer work, Dan Talbot. Uh, Eric Bottasini and Kathy Simmons worked diligently over the summer to get our facility prepared for a new school year. I'm very proud of the work that they did to prepare our school. The building and grounds were worthy of the important task of welcoming our students to a new year. And I just have to say, I think they do a remarkable job, not only during the summer, but all year long, just keeping the building looking, looking good. And um, not an easy task. I don't know if you noticed our front lawn is not beautiful. Um, but we're, we're built on sort of a thing and it's really hard to grow anything, but. Um, sandbar. Sandbar is the end. Well, it's yeah, sandbar. It's those pine trees that. Sandbar sounds really good. Yeah, it's the pine trees that help. Yeah, pine trees, yes. And 
Lola and Dan and Sally Rice. Um, they work hard to keep the gardens, and I, I think it just it gives it a, a welcoming feel here. So I wanted to give them a shout out. Um, summer projects, in addition to the very long list of annual summer maintenance, which Dan always looks forward to sitting down on day one when I pull out the, the big list, all of those annual things were taken care of. In addition, um, we also got new bathroom floors for four of our bathrooms. So you could stop and visit the boys and girls rooms near the gym. Um, same flooring as we had last year, and it's working out really well. Um, a similar floor in the walk-in fridge, um, which was a thing I didn't know that you could do, but our walk-in fridge needed a new floor, so it got the same solid surface. Mm -hmm. um, door jam replacement project was started, so two of our door jams have been replaced, and it's going to be an ongoing thing. I don't know if you remember, there was uh, a rusting erosion kind of problem happening, and mm -hmm. In certain rooms, when it rains really hard, there's like a puddle by the back door. So, um, new carpet in the office. We got an electrical upgrade so that we could get six mini split. So, upper wing and one room in the lower wing uh, have mini splits. The conference room was repainted and repurposed to be our new sensory room. You're welcome to stop by and visit it on your way out. Um, the book room was cleaned out to provide an additional workspace. Precarious tree limbs were removed thanks to Keith Bardwell and his team. Uh, repairs were made to the walkway that leads from the lower wing door down to the playground area. It's It had been like slowly breaking apart and we saw it. So they, they repaired that um, and we got our air ducts cleaned, which I believe was the first time in kind of a lot of years, maybe ever. Uh, so it's good. Uh, were you here when they were cleaning? Did they say if they were bad or or could they tell with the tech machinery? I didn't hear or, anything, and I kind of wanted to be invited. You know how they sh they have the commercials on TV where they show what's yeah. in your ducts. I kind of wanted to see what was yeah. in our ducts, but um, I didn't hear that anything was terrible. Okay. So that's probably a good sign. Yeah. Um, and new staff members. Uh, Suzanne Ryan is joining us as a preschool IA for the week. Liz Libby, um, we share with Deerfield. She is the teacher of English learners and also teaches global studies, which is the, the class that's taking the place of Spanish class. Um, Dan Putnam is our new kindergarten teacher. Christy Campbell is an instructional assistant in kindergarten. Sam Schoenberger is the special education teacher for grades four through six, replacing Terry Anderson. And Danielle Pedalaboard is our new math intervention. Okay. Very much looking forward to her, to her start. And I think it's such a perfect time given that we've just taken on the new math curriculum. Yeah. Great. I took a walk around the school when I first got here today. Just to, I always like to walk around a little bit. It seems I haven't noticed that we're here already for a couple of years, I was told. But everything's so nice and clean. I mean, it's proud that we have, still have this school. It's, it's, Doing a good job. I am very proud. Yeah. People we'll walk in and they always comment them. It feels good. Anything else? Any questions? No. Okay. Any public comment tonight? No public comment. Okay. Thanks for entertaining me. Yeah. <laughs> We have we have no unfinished business and we have a few new businesses. Uh first we'll do a updated policy, IHBG. And it's the all these tonight are first readings. Um, so the update within the homeschooling policy is um, you can see at the bottom. Um, right now, extra pink activities can be approved by the superintendent. Um, many schools in Massachusetts are moving away from that, and um, basically, um, only allowing those students who are enrolled in regular attendance. Be able to participate in class athletic programs, student government, other activity programs, or to graduate. Um, in the old policy, you could apply to get a frontier diploma, even though you didn't attend frontier. And that, while that's never happened, I don't think that this committee should be put in that position to make a decision. Um, if you want to homeschool and go that direction, you can get your homeschool diploma. And this is uh, mainly it's kind of steered toward frontier that has more after school activities and programs, but 
Um, the, again, the idea that we try to keep our policy the same, you know, sometimes when the effect, you know, here it would affect if you have an after school um, activity group and girls on the run, you know, you could have them stay people saying they'd like to be part of it and there would be no restrictions to it being a school activity. Um, while it's great to have community involved and I mean, put barriers up there, um, you know, having um, responsibility for building a culture around students and expectations and that kind of stuff, you get to work with it all day long. Um, and continuing to those programs after school and having people drop in, um, you know, I don't think is appropriate. And then when it comes to here's class of athletics is where one of the probably the bigger concern is they are held in, students in schools may be held to a different higher, higher different academic standard, attendance standard. You know, when we we have had school um, homeschool students. Um, Participate in, in frontier athletics and talk about how they got home late the night before and were able to sleep in while everybody else had to go to school and those kind of things. So everybody, we're doing so many different things around leadership and within our athletic programs um, and extracurricular activities and um, developing school culture. Um, I think they need to be a part of all of that when we're enrolled in our um, school activities. So. They're saying at the elementary level, they are able to purchase. They are not. They are not. They, are. they can use the, you know, uh, you know, um, get approval from principal to use the library, guidance services, or, okay. you know, we also provide um, special education resources as well for homeschooling students. It's just extra curricular activities that we're trying to. But um, REC is separate from the school, obviously. REC is not part of school. Thank you. Yeah. Good yeah. question. Yeah, REC is, you know, because. And right now, the direct program, I mean, you know, my own kids are not doing a lot of private school kids and that, and yeah. maybe even school kids are you know, yeah. So would girls on their own fall into that thing? Is it run by the direct department or is it run by the school? It's not run by the school, it's run by... No, and we did have a home school girl in it at one point. Mm -hmm. But so. it's not, it's not me. It's the... Um, but they're using... They're using they're essentially using the... They can use, yeah. so it, that would, they would have to, whoever's running that would have to... If the school is providing the stipend for it, or that yeah, kind of thing, then we just have it. It's, 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 it's the only thing I could think of off the top of my head. It's funny, it's one of those controversial. Um, but it's it's one of those things, then, um, you know, it feel like they be, couldn't drop into the after school program. No. 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 You know, other things that happen. Right. Because that's run by the school. Run by the school, funded by the school. Yeah. And so okay. that would be considered right. And so you could someone easily say it is a rec program. Right. Um, so Chrissy gave an overview. I just stole my thunder. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Yeah, but I think we've got some embedded offer there. Yeah. So I just did a quick summer project update. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly through the other schools, but I do think it's important for um, you as a school community know what's happening in other buildings because when we talk about oh work that we're doing and gosh we, you know those kind of things or other schools are doing this and we're like well why aren't we doing that I want to kind of be transparent on that because a lot is happening across the district when it comes to capital work so it's a slideshow Darius yeah, it's a that's not showing on the online I don't know how you're with the new setup how it works but if anyone else is online they can't see it really other than like the screen and the oh, yeah. and give you a verbal description yeah, some things you're going to see yeah yeah well you know what I gotta do is I gotta yes, uh, share screen. Screen. so thank you No. Shelly, can you see it now? Yes. Okay. Now we'll get rid of you there. All right. That's great. There we go. So we start up in Conway. Oh, oops, can't do it that way. I gotta do it this way. Right. Okay. Think uh, um you know, also, so I had the general costs and how they were funded. So again, just for education, um, these things. So they got through town warrant around just over twenty thousand dollars. They put a camera system um, on the outside of the building. I, I not to interrupt, but I love it. There's kids involved with every part of the projects that we did at the schools, <laughs> yeah. and stuff, which is pretty cool. 
Absolutely. Um, they got a new phone system upgrade. Again, town warrant covered that. Um, and I guess I didn't go. Um, they're not playing at the game, they're playing at the main splits. They finished their building, so they now they have a fully air conditioned building outside the gym. Um, just the gym. Um, so that's what they do up in Conway, Deerfield. If you've been in front of the Deerfield, it's their front end project was a major project. Um, they had a grant for probably a third, the school paid for a third, and this town paid for about a third. But um, they, their school engineering was so broken up, it was a 80. ADA kind of a nightmare for getting you know students in and out. So what does NVP stand for? Uh, municipal vulnerability protection. Okay. That's so right. basically because there's rain gardens and capturing the water off the roof, it's not going straight into the bloody brook. That's why they were able to get that mm -hmm. so. Great. Um, they got um they got about two thirds of their me splits done, as you can see, a little bit bigger building, so they have a little bit more up there. Um, they also got a new phone system. I see 55 phones. Um, they got a new side entrance with, uh, you know, they used to be, if they used to play basketball there, the rec thing, I used to be a nightmare. They now have a, a, a more clean sidewalk going out. Um, they use any of school money and school choice there. Um, they have additional video surveillance. Um, we used the rest of their professor money for you to pay that, to do that. Um, they also do new classroom flooring, similar to what we were doing here. Um, they do a few classrooms each year. So um, there's nine more classrooms, and they're trading three per year. And then over at Frontier, um, the roof replacement, obviously, was a big one over there. Um, and just some general numbers on the costs of what it took to get to the first phase. And there's probably about four phases. so. Capital Committee will be talking about that. Replacing bleachers in the gym on just one section, one section at a time. It's a little under 10,000, but which is a our capital number, but um, I just like to mention that we're taking care of things. The walking cooler, which really came out of a previous year's town warrant um, in 23, as you can see there, finally got finally got installed over the summer. So often painting again, it's just under ten thousand dollars. But you know, we had a budget higher than that when we put it out. But you need a lift. There was a lot. Of, so it was, you know, very. It's a maintenance. It's deferred maintenance, but it's maintenance that we can't do internally, um, and have to put money aside. But we're able to get that done. Um, you can, I don't know what you're seeing here, but the different trees. They took all the trees here around the athletic fields. Um, they were dropping onto the fence, and then over by the track, there were a lot of dead trees. We actually, the town contributed some money to that project because then a little bit on Deerfield's line. Um, we may have an argument with them where the line was, but they, they in the end, gave us some money for that and over the parking lot as well. I mean, that stuff's expensive, so I just kind of made seeing it out loud because we had tree work done here. Um, the town comes and did it here, but Frontier, they have to pay for it. Sunderland, they started their mini split installation. They're on the kind of the same track as you guys in the sense of timing wise. So they got nine, nine room classrooms done. Um, they had a couple that were done prior, like the library, same as here, that kind of thing. Um, they have two phases left. They did electrical updates to get there. Same thing as here, as you can see. Um, asked for a band to put a student in it and put a kid in the closet. So I had to throw a joke in case someone's watching at home. Um, they also have rotting. Their building's made of wood, um, but similar to how you guys have replaced doors, they're replacing the rim band around the entire building. We did that in five phases at 10,000 a year. And so because of delays last year, we had did four and five. So now that's complete. They replaced windows on one side of the building. Um, they used ARPA money for it. You can see the cost there. Um, that was a nightmare project because we ran into asbestos after we got the project going. Um, there was asbestos in the window glaze itself, which we were not thinking they were doing that. We installed those in wow. 96, I think, whatever it was, 98 when they put those in. Um, but we had to do an abatement. We had to go back to the town for money um, during the summer and get that done. So it was about fifty thousand dollars more than we wanted to spend. Yeah, unfortunately, the town worked. Down, the right? town worked great with us and all that. And then we're everywhere. So, and of course, all the small maintenance stuff that like you know that you guys did in this building as well. We're, we're seeing place there. So as Christy said, we got the electrical upgrades um, through town warrant. 
You also got your mean splits being certain you put in, in six. Um, and so we have six probably going for it next year. Um, and there's the season, yes, for those remaining six. And the rebate is coming, so it actually will cost less than we did the first round. Dr. Clean, there's no pictures of that. Couldn't get any <laughs> there. Yeah, there. <laughs> yeah. um, there's probably small yeah. enough to crawl down through. Yeah. I don't want to teach any of them that that's an option. And then the bathroom um, flooring. Um, so clean and shiny. You could, yeah. Also not for the pictures no. of kids in the bathroom. No pictures of kids in the bathroom. No. Smart guys. Um, an office floor and replacement out of the maintenance budget. Again, smaller than a capital project, but just a little bit bigger than stuff we do when we're watching. How long is that floor supposed to last for the bathroom? Is that a 30, 50, 10 years? Maybe. Um, I don't know. Well, when they go to replace, that's when you get off school. Yeah, that's it. I think they're good through our Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know the lifespan of a. No, just if it came with like a warranty or something. Actually, it does come with a warranty, but I don't know what the, you know. And then um, we start replacing the exterior, two doors complete, one in progress. Um, so there'll be future doors to consider moving forward. And so as we work with the town, we're going to have to make some priority because they had some extra money with ARPA this year. We got more than we usually do. So we're going to have to make sure we prioritize, you know, door jams or floors or continue to be in the kind of stuff. So. Where are you pointing at? Oh, Fire suppression system. So wow. this is one that wasn't on your list. This was a repair that we kind of treated like a capital expense. So um, when they did the, you know, we started having some alarms um, go off. Because oh, alarms, a lot of alarms go off. So um, a quick recap, our, we see above here in the white is the, um, we have a dry system. You know, it's just full of compressed air. And then when the alarm, when the fire alarm, when the fire go, thing goes off, the air is replaced by water. Um, as it, it also the alarm goes off, that's been replaced by water. So you can see there's pinholes in that one picture. It's a good example of what's happening up in the attic. And when that occurs, this system fills with water and Wayne um, Kokoski showed up in time to shut off the water before we flooded the building, before the, it even went off. So. He was smart enough, and he's on the fire department, obviously, but he was also quick enough on his feet to say, you know what, we got to shut this to water off. Um, you know, and also um, Chief Kennedy, the, the two of them here kind of straighten things out for us. So we had to go back to the town during the summer. I went to the select board meeting, listening to your email on this, but just anybody who's watching at home. Um, I went to the select board meeting and asked for funding because we don't have $13,000 in our budget. Even if we did school choice, we'd be depleted to any emergency we'd have to go back to the town for. Um, to pay for um, repairs to the system. My understanding is that there's two zones. We may have to do more repairs in the future. Why this is happening is usually what the next question is going to be. Um, our current fire management people, Clinton mayors at the previous one, saying that when they you're supposed to flush the system every year, if water stayed inside, corrosion would occur. If you didn't bleed it properly, that could occur. But you know, is there moisture? Is there moisture in the attic that's causing these pipes to, you know, that kind of thing? You know, everybody's going to be pointing at everybody. The building is thirty something years old, so you know, you know, I don't know what the longevity of these pipes are, um, especially in areas that in the attic and so forth. So, complete all we want to redo the whole system is, you know, um, a lot of money. It's a lot of money. I forget half a million. So I think we're plucking at repairs right now. And this is, and if I remember back back in the day when I was on a, on the school committee for a few years, we had this problem. And, you know, every time we caught it before something happened, but this ain't the first time that we've had holes in pipes in this school. And they've caught it before when they, when they, when they run the system and then when they drain it, if it doesn't drain, then it means there's a clog of some kind, if I remember right. And this is, you know, this is back before Chrissy was here and Darius was the superintendent. So back in the day of probably Don Skrowski and those things, I mean, if you ever see Don, if you tell him about the system, she would say, yeah, we've had holes before, blah, blah, blah. But hey, if we 
you know, and I think it's a it's a type of pipe. I think they rate different types of cast iron, steel pipe. I mean, there's different grades, like copper has different grades. I think they still have different grades and stuff. And I think that might be one of the problems having uh, like a, a C rated type metal versus an A rated metal. And you know, that, that was told to us years ago with the different types to do the system. They could do the system with C, but this is what we're having problems with now with the holes. And this is when I came on board as principal. This was my first big learning was how a Chris compressor died your first year, right? Sprinkler, they were there repairing things the first. So you lost the compressor went down something that keeps the pressure in the pipes. Mm -hmm. no so I, was, I was getting settled in and they were working on the sprinkler system and they were doing something. They didn't realize that something was open somewhere. So it was sort of raining on my desk and I was thinking, this isn't a good sign. Right. <laughs> um, but every year, there's we needed to spend some some money on them. So the next month we will talk about capital. Um, we'll be have our lined up list. The roof is has more issues. They have pictures and stuff to show you there, but that's gonna be the October um, agenda because we'll go through and Chrissy starts to do a bill about what's on the list and go through that and then we'll be kind of presenting for it. Right now the fire suppressor system is fixed and operating as it should. Um, just in the nick of time. Just in it, you know, and you know, knock on wood because it did have an issue slowly after they were repairing it. But they go up there, they pump up the pressure, double the pressure, and, and they will not check and, and, yeah. and so they do it. So there's nothing. If there's any corrosion, it's not going to go shortly. It may, you know, so it'll be something that we have to continue to keep around this week. All right. I think that's last. It is. It's a lot for five schools. Yeah, it is a lot. It's also, yeah, a lot of kind of moving parts. And when, you know, when the project slightly goes sideways and I had to go to between the three, pro three projects, I had to go back to three different towns and ask for money during the summer, which is the first time that's happened too. So um, just a lot of, a lot of moving parts. Like that. Uh, we'll talk about next year's capital, as I said, in October. Um, well, set with that. Get going. Uh, handbook, revised, approval, vote. So the handbooks were sent out to you in digital form. They're close to 200 pages long because we, what we do is we consolidated all the handbooks in the districts together. Um, while it's overwhelming at first when you look at it, the quick links now all work. So you can just go to table of contents and go what you're looking for. Um, we are in the next, our current plan. So when I came on years ago, before the interruption of COVID, each school had its own handbook. And every single year, the principals had to change their handbook according to new rules and laws and that kind of stuff. But what we're trying to do is the stuff that doesn't change is not building site specific, keep it all consistent. And how we're treating children, how we're just playing, how we're doing whatever really should be consistent. How we line up for buses is different, you know, that kind of thing. So. More and more, um, we're going to probably revise this again next year to try to pull, to create each school section to be smaller and just more um, unique to that. You know, Shay, you can go, by the way, or the chair can let you go. All right, All right we'll see you at seven. Hope you feel better. Hi, um, so anyway, but so what you have here is in red, I sent you guys the one in red. Um, there has been some slight adjustments by principals since then, and Chrissy's still working on some slight adjustments on hers, but the major content changes are in red. School handbook should be approved by school committee, so that's why it's in front of you, and so I'm looking at both tonight to approve the handbook. Um, you can always come back and ask questions. It is a living document, and that's basically one of the first things it says is that we can change different parts of the handbook as it goes on as needed, um, but um, it does need to be approved by you. Motion. Um, uh, to approve a revised handbook. I will second. All in favor? So moved. Okay, no give, no negotiation. Subcommittees, RE, sick bank request. So um, the association is requested to negotiate a change in the sick bank 
in the current contract. And even though we're going into negotiations, they came to me last spring and said they really would like to get in place for this year. So because you didn't have a June meeting, we didn't select a person. So um, we're looking for someone. It could be the person who's in the negotiation committee, or it could be somebody just to do this. But um, they want to reword how how you access sick bank time, and they have a they have a proposal. So they kind of go through it and doing it outside of the the contract negotiation. At the same time. Within the contract, they're going to have to negotiate to put it into the contract because it would be a one year deal and that kind of stuff. So, um, we're just looking for who wants to represent Wheatley on that committee. And then once they get that committee together, we'll have a meeting with them. Hopefully, it can get done in a meeting or two. Is these are two different things, but, but we'll really need one person to take care of negotiations in the sick bank, or is it all the all the same so one person to take care of it you mean it, it could be the same person so basically you are going to negotiations i got a letter we will as soon as i get through school committees because you know Helen's reorganizing right. and i know who's on our committee we will probably start setting up dates so probably i reached out to the president today and said maybe looking at no earlier than the second week of october and then we'll start what happens is they you know, for those you know, for you better right? so um we book out like three months worth of dates because the attorneys have trouble getting dates. They're doing other things and everybody's got crazy lives and so on and so forth. So we'll book out all these dates. This other one's going to happen on the side. There's not going to be attorneys present and stuff. It's just going to be us in the association coming up with an MOU. I, mean, I can do through the year. Yeah. That's fine. So, it's going to be a couple of meetings. Yeah, I mean, even better if you get it done in one because it's okay. going to be temporary for one year and then it, whether or not it gets inserted into the full contract that has to go to the full negotiating team. Mm -hmm. Now I think again. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. Because we wouldn't, because we wouldn't fully bargain something that large, uh, mm -hmm. something significant. We would do an MOU that basically said sunsets at the close of this contract and needs to be put into the other contract where it can be thought okay. through. So that's how we'll probably approach it. So Beth, you you'll take care of that. Sure. And like I said, if you get Something. Yeah, I'll be happy to help. Right. Yeah, you know, <laughs> what I mean. Yeah, let's We have first readings on the policies ACA, ACAA, ACAB, ACA R, and AC R first readings. So as you read through these, these are. Um, uh, Policies, uh, non discriminating on the basis of sex, non discriminating on the basis of gender identity, uh, sexual sexual and sex based harassment and retaliation, all fun stuff. Um, and non discrimination on the basis of sex under Title IX, including sex based harassment. So these are all coming out of the new Title IX with the new Title IX that was released in. August, I think I talked about a little bit last fall. Mm -hmm. um, the, our attorney sent us language changes that need to be done in our in our policies. And so that's what you're seeing in front of you. And then non-discriminating policy, including harassment and retaliation. So it's a lot of legal jargon um, and just modifications that you can see the, the changes are in red and the added additions are in blue. The one thing I do want to talk about though is the ACAA is what our um, what our committee, our um, A and E committee, our anti-racism and equity committee, put together as one of our projects this year. So we took our current policy. This is a lot of new language, but it basically spells out what do we mean by what we're going to do um, around gender identity um, and how we're going to handle pronouns, how we're going to handle accessibility to bathrooms, physical education, and those and and so forth as you go through education and training. So. It's very um, far more clear. It's in a gentler language. It's a more accepting language that have been we, you know, our last one, ACAA, prior to this was basically we will not discriminate. This basically shows how we're not going to discriminate. And um, this also went by the Frontiers LGBTQ um, plus um, student group. We had them read it as well to get their feedback. Their feedback is in here as well. Um, as, your feedback that applies to policies and well, they have some other ideas 
for the school, but uh, it's in, it, so that is in there too. So, so that one's a little bit different than um, it's an add-on as, as an AA, the ACA. <laughs> Pleased to have that in front of you too. So the first reading, if you have questions um, between now and the next meeting, shoot it to me because if it's around the legality around harassment and sexual harassment, I have to go to the attorney, most likely unless it's a type of earth. But just so I'm clear, the ACAA is coming from a group, the group at Frontier. It's well, our AD committee is our full district, U38 okay. and Frontier. Okay. Um, and then they, we also included students to ask students to look at as well as part of their club. Perfect. And um, others come from the state. They're, they're from coming them. from the state. MASC released it, and then um, Dupree Law Offices went in and made what they felt was their adjustments. And since okay. they're our counsel, we went with their model. They're about the same. Okay. The legal, the move around, you'd read it and go, you know, <laughs> you, you would say, like, I don't know why they had to change it, but they did. You know, so, that kind of thing. so um, those are the recommendations from your attorney. Any other questions? Okay. Presentation of designing the next district strategic plan. All right. So, um, oh, I didn't put it on here. Give me a second. On oh, my laptop, I don't know if I was presenting on here. So, um, Thank you. Thank you. Right. So, a strategic plan. So, basically, how we talked about last year, we have a strategic plan, we have an equity plan, we have a professional development plan. But your strategic plan basically is a three to five year plan to look at the vision and direction of the district. It's like the umbrella at the top of all the plans, and then you have all your other plans underneath it, all the way down to your school improvement plans. I created the strategic plan when I entry as a superintendent. It was an, called an entry plan slash strategic plan. Built on that, then COVID hit. And then I kind of repaired all the stuff we didn't do as we came out of COVID. So I got seven years out of that five-year plan. Um, and so now we're in a timeline to create a new strategic plan. And so um, different districts approach this differently. Um, some of them do a... Uh, the amount of public versus school input. And I was trying to get a balance where we had very little public input into the last one, um, trying to get some public put into this one. So um, our leadership team, um, so this year what we wanna do is build a strategic plan and the school improvement plans will be built off of the kind of the skeleton which remains from the previous strategic plan. A lot of things in strategic plan that are not it's not rocket science on where you're going. Um, but there is some finite, there's some fine things within a plan. Um it's important to get community feedback. So um, you know, we're gonna create district priorities uh, and then you know, specific goals, strategies to achieve them and measure outcomes and track process. Um, so it is a living document, we will update it from year to year as we go, but let me just kind of talk about how we plan on reaching out to the community. So I will communicate by the end of the month with families and staff that we are doing this and basically information below. Um, we're gonna create a survey for families and staff about um, positives and areas of improvement in districts and areas of concern. Um, and also areas that are really well so it's continued. And then after that, we are going to do obviously conversations in each of the buildings. Um, we kind of get um, feedback we want to share a little bit more after we serve it. And then we're going to develop uh, a courtship student success, uh, which is basically when our starts to be the universities with all the partners. A lot of people who want to be back to the industry, academic, social, social, community, all kinds of things. Those good things. Uh, that, that, that brain 
like splat consoles, so it's basically what it's supposed to do in the respiratory part. Last back in the day, we had FBS, you know, CLC, CLC, or something. And we had to do that. And then we had to do that. So, yes, you can see the video. So, if you can back in that, you can see the lots of stuff that we now. It really is setting next year's planning into place. Um, the teachers in this district right now, um, in the elementary, um, as I say, probably overwhelmed. Um, we're launching multiple curriculums at the same time. Um, you know, we're, we're working with social emotional um, improvement around the second step. We're doing all these things, but that will be in the plan. Um, but we also want to get different feedbacks or different things from um, their community. We talked about our schools. So, uh, yeah, so that's kind of the, that's the only thing that, that's the only thing that, that's the only what I plan on doing. So, you see, this is a pretty good plan. We probably have a new vendor meeting. Thanks to our non black children. So, I thought, that's close to the earlier event. I'm going to get stuff to grab. I'm trying to prefer balance in our science district um, and such. So, and the good plan, mm -hmm. the plan, the plan, right? Yeah. Well, the science plan is a plan. Yeah. Um, I don't have anything. There's nothing at the collab area. What do you have for us, Jerry? Is anything that's happening? Can you just say what's happening? There is certain what's coming. Uh, I think just during you know, every set of matters negotiation here. So we will be putting as soon as things get rolling, we'll have a um, executive session might be on our on future agendas. If we get rolling, we're going to give updates or if you did look from you. Oh, uh, I did throw on there the ballot question number two. Um, people may ask questions about that um, to you as a school committee member, your opinion on it. Um, I just want people to be clear because I've heard a lot of conversations around it. The ballot number two does not eliminate MCAS. It eliminates MCAS as a graduation requirement. The federal government, this is for somebody anyway watching, the federal government requires that each state have an assessment in order to see, see federal funding, and that is MCAS. If they want to swap out MCAS, that will be a very expensive, time consumed fix every year to do it. It's not just even the people voted against it, they would be voting against federal funding. So it's about graduation um, requirements um, in. And so forth. So I just wanted to say that because you're going to start seeing signs go up and you guys are the next education in our district. So you just want to share the student. And then um, Brent Cherry's had one student in 17 years, not graduated to MCAS, and that student, um, you know, there's a lot of other issues going on. It's not, so you can get through. I just want to say it's not, I don't see it as a pressing issue within our district, but obviously, districts. They have issues. There's about 700 students a year with one graduate out of, I think, what they said, 10,000 or something like that. I'm afraid they won't have the number of grounding. It's a very small percentage. And whether or not, I mean, I, I don't want to take political side in it. Um, my association, Massachusetts Association of Super School Superintendents, has voted against removing it as a graduation requirement. Um, and you can look at what different groups are. Different groups have different opinions on it. Um, are there students that are passing classes and don't pass central? Like, I assume they should graduate. So people may not, some folks may not pass the M, so they take their sophomore year. Yeah. So there are students who don't pass, let's say, the math their sophomore year. And then we do, um, you know, targeted help 
yeah. to not, not necessarily teaching a test, it's just they need more math mm -hmm. in order to get to that, to that spot. Um, we get students, you know, with significant IEPs passing the yeah. entrance. You know what I mean? Um, that um, we get students that, so I don't see it as a barrier. I mean, you're asking, you're asking my opinion on it. I think it looks at you as a measure when you are a student in one school. How do I measure up against a student in another school unless I'm taking the SAT? It shows that my I worked hard. My diploma is, is as strong as the diploma down the street. That's, that's again, I shouldn't give an opinion, but that's kind of how I feel about it. Trickier in other areas that yeah, mm -hmm. right. Bigger schools, bigger schools, yeah. urban areas. Right, right, right. From attendance to other issues that poverty. Yeah. No. Yep. So, right. that was what I had in my report. Anybody else have anything they want to share? I'll move to adjourn. I will second. All in favor? 